I decided to take advantage of Larry <laughs> beyond giving his testimony and um, quiz him on fatherhood because as a young father, I'm usually eager to hear from folks who have walked in those shoes before. And, um, uh, you know, I told Larry in advance, it's like, you know, um, uh, this isn't the conversation where it's like, um, you know, you're the sage or anything like that. You're, you're the expert, you know, you're the doctor or anything like that. Uh, but, but I can imagine, actually, I don't have to imagine. I know that uh, as, a, as a father, you will have had probably innumerable moments in life where you have received lots of help from the Lord, right? right. Um, lots of help from scripture, lots of help from mentors, lots of help from, um, you know, other dads. Um, and so even if, if for no one else, for me, I want to hear what kind of uh, help um, other dads have, have had in their experience as a father. So, so, that, so question one, you know, what, what kind of, what's helped you the most as you've yeah. been a dad, as you've raised your kids, what kind of help have you received over the years as a dad? You know, I think, I think we all feel completely inadequate. Yes. And, and I, you know, I, I feel that way even now trying to think of, of, of what, you know, Cindy and I did as, as parents with our children. Uh, and, and part of that is is pretty natural because you know this job of raising children doesn't come with a training manual. Uh, there's we all have to learn it uh, from the ground up. When when that little one comes home in that mm-hmm. you know in that little bassinet, you're right. going, "What do we do with this thing?" They're just going to let me take this home. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, and we go. We're <laughs> fearful. We just go. Oh my gosh! And, right. and we and thank goodness, you know, we just get one day after another to learn, and and it doesn't call come all at once. You know, mm-hmm. I know some some people do when they adopt, and that's you know, sure. You know, pray for them. Sure. Uh, but but one of the things is it is it you know we're not going to be perfect. Um, you mm-hmm. know, we are we are not perfect. Our children aren't perfect, and so so we have to you know realize that. Um, you know, I think of some of the influences in my life as a dad. Uh, of course, it was my own parents and the men around me that, that raised children, uh, uncles and grandparents and, and all of that. Uh, all those people uh, had a real direct influence on many of the things that I, that I did with my own children. But, you know, as far as, as, far as uh, you know, in the Christian realm and, and that Goes, I think of, of two names in specific, and one is, is James Dobson, and which is okay. a real familiar name to a lot sure. of people, um, especially of my era in the sure. early years. Yeah. And, uh, Chuck Swindoll. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think of, of the influences that they had. And, and, and I give you some examples. And, you know, for those who are listening to these examples and have heard them before, bear with me, but sure. they're, they're pretty cool. For at least they were good for me. Uh, Back in 1980 and 81, uh, Cindy and I had been married a couple of years. And, and by the way, we didn't have children for about six years uh, after we were married. Uh, and uh, this film series came along uh, by Jim Dobson. And, and you know, we didn't really think we needed to go and we didn't have children. And, and yet when I went, I was absolutely transformed. And there's only two things I remember from that film series. And I'll share them with you today. But it, it impacted really everything that that, you know, in many ways, what we did with our children. Um, and one of them has to do with security and boundaries. Hmm. Uh, when, you, when you think of, uh, of that, um, you think of, of how impactful it is on a child to be secure in their life. And, and one of the things that we don't think about a lot is, is the boundaries that we have to place around them. Yeah. Uh, and Dobson, in his film series, gave a really great example. And so uh, in the late 70s, there was a study that was done about children in a playground setting. And uh, I was th- in this particular elementary school, the, the, the road was out front of the school and, and the kids went out for recess and, and it was a very busy road. And so the children uh, all kind of played up close to the, the building and they were a little bit afraid of the, the street. And, and, uh, and so they, uh, they did an experiment and they, and they decided to put a fence right up against the road and to see how that would change the behavior of the children. And of course, as you might expect, the children just, you know, they flocked out into sure. the area uh, up against the fence. And, and, you know, and he brought it back around to the idea that children uh, need boundaries mm-hmm. and that children 
are secure within those boundaries. Sure. And he gave the example that it's the children's job to pound against those boundaries as hard as they can in many places they can to find out where the weaknesses are. And of course, you know, we're the boundaries. We, sure. we set those boundaries. And so it's, a, it's the kid's job to pound up against those. Sure. It's the parent's job to hold them. And, you know, we're not their friends. We are their parents. Sure. And, and the more that that happens, the more the kids uh, know the boundaries and the more secure they are. Sure. And, and all of a sudden they can settle back into a security that, that is, uh, is really gives them the freedom to, to exercise their gifts, you know? Yeah. And so, um, but uh, that was pretty cool. An- another, another one that he gave, uh, which probably helped my wife more than anything because she was teaching, mm-hmm. uh, and, and there was always noise in the schoolroom and, and at the time, and, and, and everybody has a different way of dealing with, you know, how loud you know, children get, and, mm-hmm. and they, you know, and so if a child says, you know, can I do this, Dad, and you say no, and then they say it again, they say it again, and all of a sudden the volume goes up, you know, Dobson said, you know, if you really want, you know, the volume low, then you just train them that the first no is the real no, you know, because the child knows that, sure, the, sure. you know, that your no might be up here someplace. <laughs> and, and right. So, anyway. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Um, Chuck Swindoll had a had a big impact on us uh, because because of some of the, of his writings. I'm going to show a book here in a minute, but but what what we learned about about children is that is that they really need to be trained and not just let grow up. Mm. And so training is is so terribly important. Um, uh, and and I'm talking you know discipline is not training. Discipline is is in response to other things, right? But training is one of those things that that you do from the very start. Sure. And you know the children are training you, but <laughs> but but one of the things that that uh, that we learned is that in you know when you go to Proverbs twenty two verse six, and this is a book by Charles Swindoll, it's called You and Your Child, and it's old, but it just is timeless when it comes to the different sure. things that it says. Uh, but one of the things that that he uh, he writes in here. Uh, is in Proverbs 22, 6, it reads this, and we've all heard this, by the way. It says, train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. And and we sometimes think, you know, uh, the way he should go is the way that we think he should go. But it really means the way the child is is structured and the way the child's characteristics are. And he uses the word bents. You know, mm-hmm. B-E-N-T-S. Sure. And, um, and then he paraphrases it by saying this, uh, that, that adapt the training of your child so that it is in the keeping with his God-given char- characteristics and tendencies. And when he comes to maturity, he will not depart from the training he's, re- he's received. And so this, this had a, a, a really big impact uh, for us on the raising of our children, yeah. that we understood that it was our job to be a student of our children, to understand them. And, uh, and you know, the, the training uh, would involve things like character qualities, you know, uh, about, uh, you know, sharing in, in the younger years and, and honesty and, and what dishonesty is and, and mm-hmm. what it shouldn't be. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we rarely disciplined you know, based upon uh, childish things. Mm. Uh, we discipline based upon rebellion. Mm. And rebellion is something that, that, as God knows in our heart, you know, we know we're the best ones to judge in our children's heart. Sure. And so we can see that rebellion and we know the line that they cross. Yeah. And, and, we, and yeah. We, we tried to be consistent about that. Yeah. And, yeah. But, uh, yeah, the consistency has been... Yeah, yeah, that's a lesson hard learned, right? It and, really is. Yeah, and how quick you are. I remember asking a mentor of mine, like, what, because like, um, it's Ephesians 6, I think, right? Like, um, fathers, do not exasperate your children, right. but train them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And so I asked my mentor one time, how do you exasperate your kids? Mm-hmm. Like, how, like, what does that look like? And he said, well, one thing that exasperates our kids is when the rules are constantly changing yes. or when it's, or when the standards inconsistently applied, yes. right? It's like they are hypocrite experts 
like they have perfect hypocrite dar, <laughs> right? They can it's identify true. it right away. Yeah. And, um, and so, um, so that was, that was helpful for us too. And just seeing too, like how all of this, like the training part of it, you know, like, because I, I wrestled with, um, you know, I love my dad, but, um, but dad didn't always know how to be a dad and he wasn't present very much. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, and so later in life we had a great relationship, but, um, but that, 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 that wasn't always the case. And so when I was getting married, I confided in my counselor, like, mm -hmm. I don't know how to be a dad. Yeah. Like, right. And he said, you have a heavenly father, yeah. right? Like your heavenly father is, is not hidden himself. <laughs> right. So you have a model there, like don't despair. <laughs> and that was really helpful too. There's this, the training that had to, has to happen in my kids. Right. You know, it was not training that, that I had to necessarily worry about being hidden somewhere in mm -hmm. some deep dark cavern that had to be mined. It was, you know, it's modeled in the father yes. and the way he has cared for us and taught us and showed himself to us. And so that was significantly helpful for me, I know, um, for sure. W one thing I definitely want to hear from you though, <laughs> uh, it came from your wife. This was, this was, this was months ago where she brought this up to me and, uh, uh -oh. maybe, maybe <laughs> you're going to, you're going to, you're going to figure out what I'm talking about in, in just a second. Um, but she talked about something that if not every day, regularly, you would say to your kids before you would leave the house for work. And it was something about, um, her role in the house oh. being the, you know, being oh. the queen. Oh yeah. Okay. So tell, tell, oh, tell the family. Sick. Um, what you would say to your boys, you know, as you were leaving the house, your kids, as you were leaving the house yeah. about their mom and their attitude toward their mom. Well, I think that, that you said it before that if, if kids understand how to find the hypocrisy in a situation, mm -hmm. they also know how to divide and conquer. Yes. And so, so one of the things that, that we didn't let happen is we did not let happen that the children would find a way to crack us open and uh -huh. crack us apart. Uh -huh. And so that that if I wanted and expected something out of my children or a child that you know they couldn't go to mom and get out of it, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. or vice versa. And so uh, if they needed to be disciplined when I got home, uh, I didn't ask you know, Cindy, why, or interrogator. I just mm -hmm. did it because I trusted her. Yes. And so, so when I would leave the house, and especially as the boys got to the level of their mother's eyes and they started growing taller, mm -hmm. uh, I would remind them that, that this is the queen of the castle. Mm -hmm. And uh, this queen has absolute rule because you are absolutely a lowly prince. Yeah, yeah. And nothing more than a lowly right. prince to take right. orders. And right. So, right. so they uh, they knew that we would be together yeah. as yeah. much as we possibly could. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> I love that. I thought everybody else should hear that. <laughs> that was great. Uh, that was really good. So, yeah. well, anything else you think you think the the dads would we benefit from hearing before we let them go? Well, you, in our discussion, um, you mentioned shortcomings and what yeah. what uh, you know. What I may not have been so faithful about, and, and one of the things that that I think we all struggle with is is impatience and forgiveness. Sure. And and when we're impatient um, with our with our children, uh, it shows. Uh, you know, as we raise our children, we're always looking at uh, at at correcting them at times, and we need to you know forgive them and let the let them know that the father forgives them. Yeah. But every once in a while, we screw up, yeah. and we're impatient and uh one of the things that i learned was that it's okay to go to your kids and say you know i was wrong right would you forgive me and it's very interesting what that does you yeah. know how it works between us and the father uh it is no different with our children right they recognize it and they are and they when you demonstrate it to them uh, it will be demonstrated in their lives yeah. eventually. So that's, yeah. that's really exciting to see. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely a good lesson. And it's been so helpful for me as a dad, not have to pretend to be, you know, 
some hero yeah but to just be honest with my kids when yeah and that models the right way they need to handle their own you know their own sin and their own issues and so that's a good word yep right yeah that's a good word all right thank you